Today is Thursday, October 28th. What to know about Democrats' latest efforts to get a big social spending and climate bill passed. It looks like paid family leave is now off the table. We'll explain. Also, what China is up to that could spark a new arms race. Plus, a possible promising new treatment for COVID-19. What new option you'll have the next time you get a new U.S. passport. And you can now ask Google to take down some search results, at least for those under 18 years old. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Top Democrats on Capitol Hill are still working to strip down their massive $3.5 trillion social spending and climate bill in order to get it passed. It's already been cut in half during negotiations, and now we're getting a better idea of what could stay and what may go. Sources tell news outlets like NBC News and The Wall Street Journal the package will not include paid family and medical leave. This is not the first big idea Democrats have gotten rid of either. They also scrapped Free Community College, a program meant to push utility companies to generate more clean energy and a series of tax increases. For now, the package still includes other big initiatives, though, like universal pre-K for three- and four-year-olds, low-cost housing aid, expanded Medicaid coverage, more affordable home care for seniors, and more. But nothing seems to be set in stone. Remember, the original package was going to be $3.5 trillion, and now the final cost is expected to be $1.7 trillion. And Democrats are also still figuring out how to pay for it. Originally, the plan included an extra 3% tax on people who make more than $5 million a year. But that reportedly changed, too. So it's now instead a 5% tax on people who make more than $10 million a year. Even with all these changes and more, no Republicans are expected to get on board. They've said this package puts too much government into people's lives. So with that, Democrats can't lose a single vote in the Senate, making the negotiations pretty high stakes. Still, they're hoping to reach a deal by the end of this week. Today, lawmakers are set to grill executives from some of the world's biggest oil and gas companies. We're talking about ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, and Shell. These oil companies are facing accusations that they spent millions of dollars on a disinformation campaign that was meant to make people doubt the science of climate change. This, even though for decades now, scientists have been saying fossil fuels like oil and natural gas directly impact global warming. So far, the company's CEOs have said they never misled the public about climate change. But this will be the first time they're pressed to answer questions about it under oath. Top Democrats say this hearing will mark the start of a year-long investigation. Meanwhile, some Republican leaders say they plan to use this hearing to raise concerns about President Biden's climate agenda. They argue it's hurting the economy. America's top general is raising some concerns about China's new weapons systems. China has been spending big money to modernize its military. And over the summer, it tested a hypersonic missile that's designed to make American defenses obsolete. And it was able to partially circle the globe. The issue is, anti-missile technology here in the U.S. is designed to take down warheads on predictable paths in outer space, but not hypersonic weapons that can zig and zag through the atmosphere and speed up toward a target. American officials have mostly been silent about China's tests until now. But this week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, spoke to Bloomberg TV about the missile system, saying, quote, it has all of our attention. In fact, he said it was close to a Sputnik moment. He was referring to the launch of a Soviet satellite in 1957 called Sputnik. It made the U.S. worry the Soviets were getting ahead in the space race, and it also helped ramp up a nuclear arms race. So analysts say this could inspire a new arms race for a different generation. Some have proposed a trillion-dollar update of America's nuclear systems. But for now, President Biden is still avoiding that. More details are coming out about the weapon that killed a cinematographer on a movie set last week. Law enforcement officials now say they think a real bullet was loaded into the antique revolver Alec Baldwin was practicing with. This, even though the assistant director apparently told Baldwin the gun was safe to use. As we know now, when the actor pulled the trigger, cinematographer Helena Hutchins was shot and killed. Since then, the assistant director told authorities he should have checked the gun more thoroughly. But it's still not clear exactly who put the live round in the gun. As the New York Times reports, live rounds are typically not allowed anywhere on film sets. On this set, though, the sheriff's office seized 500 rounds of ammunition, including blinks, dummy rounds, and live rounds. All that evidence will be analyzed by the FBI. So far, no one is facing criminal charges, but authorities say that's not out of the question. 
an antidepressant that's widely available and affordable could end up being a helpful treatment for COVID-19. Fluvoxamine is a pill that's been prescribed for nearly 30 years for obsessive compulsive disorder and depression. But in a recent large trial out of Brazil, COVID-19 patients who took it were much less likely to go to the hospital than those who didn't. Everyone who participated in that trial already had COVID-19 and they were all unvaccinated. They also were all considered high risk of getting a severe case because of things like heart disease, lung disease, or diabetes. Some people took fluvoxamine, others got placebos, aka dummy pills. And those who got the actual antidepressants were 66% less likely to go to the hospital and 91% less likely to die from COVID-19. This is especially promising because other COVID-19 therapies are not that easy to get. There's antibody treatments that are costly and given with an IV. Merck also has a new pill option that the FDA is still reviewing and could greenlight soon. But even if regulators do authorize that one, it'll cost the government about $700 per course. For fluvoxamine, a 10-day course costs about $4. Researchers presented this data to the National Institutes of Health and the World Health Organization so they could decide whether to recommend the drug for COVID-19 soon. More news just ahead, but first we'll take a quick break to thank our sponsor. We've talked about it right here on The Newsworthy recently, that more people are quitting their jobs. Some have referred to it as the great resignation. But if you're hiring, you don't have to see this as a challenging environment. You could see it as a great opportunity with Indeed's help. Indeed is a hiring partner that gets you what you really want, a short list of quality candidates as fast as possible. Because you can do it all, attract, interview, and hire all at Indeed. I know what a time-consuming process hiring usually is, and it's often when you're needing to fill the spot yesterday, right? That's why having everything in one place is so helpful. No wonder Indeed is the number one source of hires in the U.S. and delivers one and a half times more hires than even internal referrals, according to Talent Nest. So get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Offer valid through December 31st. Tim's terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. For the first time ever, the U.S. has issued a passport with an X for the gender. It marks a major milestone, especially for people who do not identify as just female or male. The Biden administration had promised to do this in an effort to make passports more inclusive. The change comes after a federal discrimination lawsuit. An intersex and non-binary U.S. Navy veteran sued the State Department back in 2015 over this issue. And now reports say they are the first person to get the passport marked with an X for gender. The State Department said it's still working to update its systems and forms, but that all passport applicants will have the X choice by early next year. And there's another change that is already in place. People who want to change their gender marker on a U.S. passport no longer need to show medical certification, and the choice does not have to match their other documents. Skip the lines at the airport. There's now the option to check your bags in seconds, go through security, and board the plane without ever getting out a boarding pass or ID. How? Face scans. Delta Airlines is testing new technology using facial recognition in the hopes of saving travelers time from curb to gate. Right now, this is a pilot program in Atlanta. It'll soon be available for travelers who are signed up with Delta's frequent flyer program, who already have TSA pre-check, and who opt in to do this. But the airline says it'll expand to more airports by the end of the year. It also builds on similar tests at Delta's Detroit hub. And most major U.S. carriers have also tested limited biometric ID checks. So is this the future of flying? Will travelers even want this? And what about privacy concerns? Well, for now, one travel analyst told CBS News their research shows four out of five passengers would share their personal or biometric data with an airline they use regularly to save time. Anyone who's younger than 18 can now ask Google to take their photos down so they don't show up in search results. That means they won't show up as thumbnails or in the images tab on Google. Already, anyone can ask Google to remove photos if they include any personal information like a medical ID or social security number. But now any minor, their parent, guardian, or legal rep can request the same thing when it's just a picture of the kid. To be clear, though, that does not totally remove the photo from the internet. It will still appear on whatever site it came from if that webmaster keeps it up. It just won't be searchable on Google anymore. Another thing is you have to be currently underage. So if you're 30 now and there's a picture of you online from when you were 15, well, that doesn't count. The process to get an image off the search results starts with filling out a form. We posted a link to that form in today's episode notes. 
Instagram is now letting everyone share links in their stories with stickers. You may remember the platform used to have the option to swipe up on stories for links, but it was only available for verified accounts or those with at least 10,000 followers. But it did away with that feature. And it recently added the link stickers instead, though it was also only for some creators. Well, now it doesn't matter if you have just one follower or millions, everyone can use the links sticker. This way, you can direct people to a different website to learn more about a product, for example, or read an article, sign up for a service, or, you know, listen to the Newsworthy podcast, and more. Just select the sticker tool from the top of the navigation bar when you upload content to your story, and then add the URL. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. And today we're talking about the World Series. We're only two games in, but it's already been a pretty intense couple days of baseball. But first, a quick break to thank our sponsor, BetterHelp. I know people are out and about a bit more, but COVID-19 is still taking a toll on people's happiness. A 2021 Pew Research survey found many Americans are still dealing with mental health difficulties in the second year of the pandemic. It shows about one-third of U.S. adults report at least occasional sleeplessness or anxiety in the past week. And whether it's the pandemic or something else entirely that's interfering with your happiness, you can do something about it. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. They have counselors who are specialized in stress, anxiety, sleeping, trauma, grief, anger, relationships, and so much more. And everything stays confidential. You can send a message to your counselor anytime, plus schedule weekly video or phone sessions if you want to. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com newsworthy. Join more than a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com newsworthy. Now back to Thing to Know Thursday. The World Series is now tied up. The Atlanta Braves won Game 1, and the Houston Astros won Game 2. But it's going to be an especially big challenge for the Braves to come back and win the whole thing. They were already considered underdogs, and then during Game 1, the Braves lost their ace pitcher. Charlie Morton took a 102-mile-an-hour ball to his right leg during the second inning. He actually kept playing for a while, threw 16 more pitches, recording three outs. But in the third inning, his leg started to swell and he started to fall. The leg literally gave out. Morton found out his leg was broken and he was going to miss the rest of the World Series. He apologized to the rest of the team, which pretty much everyone agreed was unnecessary. Then a rookie pitcher got the call of a lifetime. Tucker Davidson was watching Game 1 on TV, eating a salad from the Cheesecake Factory. But when he saw Morton go down, he said he had a feeling he might be called up. And just a few hours later, he was. The 25-year-old, who has only five games of big league experience and has never played in the postseason, was added to the World Series roster. Game three is happening in Atlanta tomorrow. All right, thanks for listening and for sharing the show. We'll be back with much more news tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 